In this lesson, you're going to learn how to build or create a database. Now, I don't want to get into the technical aspect of all what a database is, the, the, you know, what makes it up and things like that, because that's not important. What you do need to understand, however, is that a database allows for you to store information. So in order for Joomla to work, you need to connect it to a database. So all your user accounts, all your, your information there, whether it's your content, your images, your videos, your link, all those things are being stored in this database that you're going to create. And you're going to need this information later on so that you can be able to put it in an SU or, you know, install in Joomla. So once again, if your dashboard doesn't look something like this, make sure to contact your web host and ask them how do you install or create a database uh, and they're going to be able to let you know exactly where to do that. And once you've gotten that information, if your dashboard looks like this, just click on MySQL databases. On this page, you're going to have a prefix. All databases have prefix based on your domain. Now, this is a demo account that I set up uh, for this course. So as you can see, I've created several, you know, demo uh, databases uh, for testing purposes. So what you want to do, you want to name your database, whatever name you come up with. It doesn't have to be anything extensively long. It can be something that's very short and descriptive so that you remember what it is um, as your site get you to add more sites, uh, for example, more stuff than you may want to create things with names that you remember. So for this one, I'm just going to call Helix U and then you click on create database and you get this message that your database has been added successfully. So I'm just going to right click cop, uh, hover over that and then just copy this because you're going to need this information later on when you are connecting Joomla. So you go to back and from here, you want to scroll down. You want to find where it says add new user. So this is the user that's connected to once again, I want to get to technical, but for the user, you can use the same name as your database or you can create something else. But for this uh, purpose, I'm just going to create the same thing. Here looks you. And then for the password, since I have a Mac is suggesting for me to use uh, this, but I'm not going to use it because this is like a, you know, a demo stuff. So you can create something that is very simple for you to remember. And once your database user has been added, you can, it shows you the password strength here. So you want to make sure that you have something to have a very strong, uh, number here. So if your number is like in the twenties and thirties and forties, you, you don't want to go with that. So once you've done, you click on create user. And then once they use me successfully at it, you get the same message. Once again, I don't have to copy this, but I already have it. So I'm going to click on back. And finally, the last step that you need to do in order for your database to be connected properly. Now, if you don't do this step and you're trying to install Joomla in the next step, you're going to get it's not going to work. So this is a very key step that sometimes people forget it. And then this all oh, my installation is not working. So what you want to do is you want to add user to your database that is going to connect it. So you click on this drop down. And if you don't, if your back end looks like this, you're going to get a drop down like this. But if you don't have anything, you may need to just add something fresh. So let's click on here and we're going to go to Helix U. That is the user and go for the database. The same thing, Helix U. And then you click to add. When you get to the ad, you see some very important information. And you always want to make sure that you know what the user is and what the database is. So you want to click on all privileges. It's very important. If you don't click on some of these here, it's not going to work correctly. So remember the database user and the database uh, username. So let's click on make changes. And you get this message that everything has been done successfully. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look, look at installing it on your server.